Did the wheel of time whip me or did I whip the wheel of time? You'll find out this and more. All right, friends, it's time to talk Wheel of Time. Full spoilers, full review, and what did I ultimately think after going through all this as a non-fan of the books? I knew nothing about this other than the name of the author and um, that there were a lot of books. I think there's like 14 of them, and this was not something that I was going in as a fan of like Game of Thrones where I had read all the books ahead of time or Lord of the Rings which I have read numerous numerous times this was something totally different to me and it's interesting because I did previous stories on this where Amazon was using the Wheel of Time as their next marquee big time big big show that they were hoping would catch the attention of the whole world kind of like Game of Thrones one thing I'll say for sure, this is not Game of Thrones. It's very different. It has a very different tone, a very different pace, and is not, while at times can be confusing, it's not as confusing as Game of Thrones, uh, although it does leave a lot on the table that they did not explain. But we'll get into that and more as we break it down. But let's take a look at what the fans th thought. I always like to see what that looks like. The Rotten Tomatoes just gives like an idea of what people are thinking. Uh, we have the critic score at 82%. The average audience score is at 71%. Critics say Wheel of Time's revolutions can be a bit creaky as it tries to stand out from other fantasy series but succeeds admirably in making Robert Jordan's epic approachable for the uninitiated. I think this is all true. I, I get that. And um, while I may have said that this is the world's ugliest cast, and I will not back down from that statement, these people are heinous <laughs> for, Holly, for Hollywood standards. Actually, one thing, I don't know if this is true, but I kind of feel like they were uglied up for the show. Uh, because when I see them, like, they're not that ugly. Especially, like, the Marcus Rutherford character. Just, like, I don't know what they did to these people. But, <laughs> but like, Rosamund Pike, they're not really ugly people. Even the uh, the ginger guy, uh, Rand, not... not <laughs> what did they do? How do they make these people so ugly? Uh... <laughs> My biggest gripe is not enough minotaurs. I enjoyed the, the minotaur savagery and I did not get enough minotaurs. They were only in the first and the last episode. Um, and overall, I liked it. I'm not gonna say I loved it. It's got me interested enough to see where it goes. The cliffhanger was a little bit confusing mostly to as where the story goes because there's like, ah, oh, and again, this is full spoilers. It's like, uh, I think she says at the very end, um, we just won one of the battles, not the whole kit and caboodle. So she doesn't say kit and caboodle. I, I say that. <laughs> so the war is going to be ongoing. I don't know why she wouldn't explain that to Rand as he walks off and says like, he's like, yeah, I'm out. Just tell everybody I'm dead. I, I don't want to come back from this. And she should have been like, yo bro like this is just one battle we're gonna need you for a little bit more so let's go through it um you gotta remember too this was they dropped the first three episodes and then they dropped the rest of them week by week by week so it's not super clear to me but the story is there's these a nice sleepy little town that doesn't get a lot of visitors that that's very kind of like remote and unknown it's called the two rivers and um moraine who's this uh, wizard witch chick from an order of female wizard witch chicks is coming to look for the dragon reborn. She finds five kids in, in this town, five young adults, whatever you want to call them, and decides that let's y'all y'all come with me. I don't know which one of you is the dragon reborn, but y'all coming with me. So essentially it's about the story of them getting to somewhere and I feel like that's the biggest problem with the show is they were so eager to get to where the end piece was 
the end set, which I thought was kind actually pretty cool, that because they were so eager to get there that they just glossed over a ton of other stuff and left it confusing for the viewer. You know, for me, this is like kind of like the travel epic, like the first part of the Lord of the Rings. But if you remember in the Fellowship, the Fellowship does not last very, very long and it breaks apart. This is sort of similar to that. But instead of having two more books to get to Mordor, he gets to Mordor right away. And it's like, okay. So they drag him back to the Aes Sedai Tower. And then the Aes Sedai are like, you got to get out of here. So then they go, they decide, well, you know what? Let's just go to the end game. And they travel through some portal thingy called the Ways. And then they end up at the Borderland City, which borders and guards against Mordor. And I'm sorry to make Lord of the Rings references, but it really is quite a bit of Lord of the Rings. A little different though, which I did like. There, there's a there's a, a specific take that I thought was kind of interesting. So anyway, uh, he abandons his friends because he doesn't want anybody who goes with him to die. And then they end up going to confront the, the final dude. So here's what I did like about it. I like the idea that there's the wheel of time and that it every 3,000 years, this prophecy comes to play. There's some dark one whatever his deal is they didn't really explain that much from of him but it's kind of a reincarnation thing right people get reincarnated and at one point there was like a futuristic city where they had future and like high technology but the last time the dragon came through he broke the world so instead of building the world up so i thought that was kind of cool and that's why they're back in like this like kind of primitive the swords and wizard time right versus having like flying spaceships, which they showed, which I thought was kind of neat. So there's a really different take on it than Lord of the Rings. It's uh, a little lacking in the philosophical and thematic department. I didn't see a lot of like character growth or themes or changes. It seemed like they were in such a rush to do everything that they glossed over all that. And I suspect strongly that the book has a lot of themes and is extremely complicated and has a lot going on. But I, you know, maybe they just wanted to go through these main characters and show you where they were going. Um, even And there weren't stakes, which I didn't really like. I felt, you know, Game of Thrones probably went too far with stakes. Like anybody could die at any time. Any main character, anybody that you wanted could die. Would, would snap of a finger, they're dead. In this, I felt like the entire cast was never in peril. Or the main cast, which turned out to be true. So that was a little tough for me. I didn't really like that component of it. I like it when there's a possibility that my main characters might perish or at least give me the idea that there could be stakes. Uh, the big bad guy, don't know his name, dark one, whatever. I liked all of those interactions. I thought they were pretty cool. Uh, and I'm getting out of the way. I'm like going out of order here, but let's, let's go. There's an article that I found that helped like, kind of refresh my memory and might give you some insight to what I was thinking when I saw this. Uh, this is from the insider and it's the 14 most shocking moments of wheel of time. And it just, it, some of it gave me an idea of like, cause it goes kind of in order. And like we, we were talking before, this has been over the series of weeks and you know, I broke down a couple of episodes, but I really wanted to get my overall thing, my overall impressions of this. The opening credits, while I like them and I like the music, I do not understand what's going on with these chicks and the, their Jesus things, like why they're saints or whatever. I just don't understand it. I don't know how it's connected. Like at least with Game of Thrones, you could tell like, oh, these are the cities they're going to this week. This opening credit sequence made no sense to me. Maybe somebody in the chat or somebody in the comments below can explain it to me because I don't get what's going on here. Maybe I'm a dumb dumb, but I'm pretty sure I paid attention and I do not understand what these are. I don't know, like, is one of them Moraine? Like, I don't know. Nobody told me. All right. Um, Edmunds Field, which I guess is a place. I did like the surprise attack from the Trollocs. I thought the Trollocs were cool. Like I said, more Minotaurs, need more of that. Uh, Perrin, cause this helps me remind me of the character's names cause I don't know them. Like to me, that was Wolf Boy. So Wolf Boy kills his own wife, which was pretty crazy. All right, he shouldn't have done that. Uh, Moraine, I remembered her name cause a lot of people said Moraine. I like that she, they were saying that she killed the dude in the ferryman who, who needed to go back and 
and she destroyed the typhoon or used the typhoon to destroy him it wasn't really a typhoon it was more of a whirlpool but either way i thought that was really cool uh it also showed her as a morally gray character and she needed to she would do anything to get what she what she wanted to get done other those cool um Nynaeve, i don't even remember her name she made an escape the, her character didn't make a ton of sense to me i didn't really understand what they were going with with her i thought it was cool that she made the sacrifice at the end but then she didn't end up dying which nullified her sacrifice i thought that was really kind of silly so i, I don't you know when you have a setup and a payoff like you show the the ladies uh, the other priestesses and they're kind of feeding each other to use power to bind the false dragon but then you have this chick this chick just magically like she gives all her power and they were like she's the strongest one we've seen in a thousand years or whatever and then she like just dies but then they bring her back like i thought that was annoying i didn't like that it just like i said it nullifies her sacrifice i thought her sacrifice meant something and then it didn't um this whole storyline with the singer guy and I'm sure the character's more important later, but you can't... Here's the problem when you rush a show. You can't introduce characters that have no significance to the plot whatsoever other than, like, moving these guys from point A to point B and then have them disappear. Like, and then expect us to be like, oh, that guy's going to have a bigger part of the plot, and then he doesn't. And then he disappears and has nothing to do with anything. Same with Matt. Like, I understand that they thought Matt, like, he just randomly disappears they didn't know who the who the dragon was so the plot knew who the dragon was who the dragon reborn was but this but we didn't so they just abandoned this guy who we thought could potentially be the, one of the dragon reborn and they just leave him there and then you're just like the plot was just like we don't care We're moving on gotta keep moving so that was one of the problems with the pacing that i, I did not like uh yeah her power i don't care about her power she like shows her power somewhere the burst of healing yeah i thought that was cool i like that again they don't explain the entire dragon reborn the the false dragon i thought it was a really cool narrative and how he turned that king and then bam that king is dead the dragon's just like gone nobody cares i lost they put him in back in jail. i don't even remember what happened to him to be honest with you and that's what you're like you try to tell all this lore in these characters and then they just they're, they're, the plot has to accelerate at such a speed that they just become irrelevant just like the children of light and this guy this uh abdul salas as amon valda the questioner for the children of the light great character really cool but because the plot says that they have to disappear and he has to get eaten by wolves he gets eaten by wolves maybe he's dead maybe he's not would i have liked to know that he was still alive or if he's not alive like i don't know do you know tell me if he is because i don't know just you know like it's just crazy this part was cool because this was character development i like this the stepping guy who kills himself because his Aes Sedai was killed they spent a little bit too much time dealing with it but it did give you the sense of it, it gave you development of how this these relationships work and everything like that but then at the same time they go to show you all this and then i guess okay so lon's the one who killed i don't know which whatever one dies not the dude with the katana the dude with the so she cuts off their bond and then he's just like i'm gonna go hunt her down but like let me back in like he doesn't kill himself i mean he because their bond gets taken away he doesn't kill himself. like they just they, they're in such a rush they don't explain stuff so whatever kind of aggravated me but whatever same thing like matt ditches them he was still in the running to be one of the dragon reborn and then i was like i guess he's not the dragon reborn he's just some dude uh this was totally random scene was it, it was it relevant to the story at all if you think about it this heavily pregnant woman kicking on these dudes butts uh apparently Rand's mom is ty green mantier ty green minotaur see what i did there but then whatever she gives birth on the i mean it's a cool scene but does it forward the plot does it give character development we don't see any of these characters ever like i, I the plot didn't have time to slow down to explore any of this 
This I don't care about. Although I care, I just think it's weird. So Perrin's in love with Egwene. I don't even know which one is which. But the fact that like she, he was like her brother figure and now he's in love with her. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, yeah, and Rand being the Dragon Reborn. I just didn't think they'd have like the straight white guy be the Dragon Reborn. I should realize from the book it was a distinct possibility. But the way the show was going and how women are so like important and powerful and there's nothing wrong with that. But they're all the casters and such. I just didn't think it could be him. And then it turned out to be him. And I was like, oh, guess what? It's him. So he has no powers. He just has the power to say no to drugs, kids. That's his power. The Dark Home's trying to give him some of them, uh, some of them goofy, gave, slipped him some goofballs, made him think like, hey, you can have this beautiful life with a beautiful child, remake the world and whatever you want it to be. And he said no to drugs. And that's what he did there. It's a thing. Look it up. So, yeah, and then uh, I did like that where she was killed, where Moraine was killed in a dream sequence. I knew she wasn't dead. That would have been wickedly awesome if she was, but I was like, yeah, so far she ain't gonna die. Just like they swore that anybody she took to, anybody he took to the, uh, the epicenter or the opening or the eye of the world, the yin yang thing on the floor would die. She didn't die. No, nothing. I thought it was cool though. I thought it was cool. I like that. And then, shocker, the guy you barely remember. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, the plot, man. This dude, the, the, the vendor at their, at their town was working for the Dark One all along. If he's working for the Dark One all along and he knew that there were five kids that, that were going to be the Dragon Reborn, why don't he just kill all of them in the beginning? If he's been visit, they said he'd visited the town a hundred times or whatever. Why don't they just kill him? Now, maybe it's just me and maybe I'm missing something here. And I'm sure you guys can explain it to me in the comments below. And I'm sure most of you will tell me just read the damn books. And I might. I might do that. But for now, I'm just analyzing the Amazon show. Again, I liked it. There were parts of it that were good. There were parts of it that were bad. The thing that I... One thing I do want to point out, though, is if I'm comparing it to The Witcher, which I'm watching currently, The Witcher looks better than this. So I don't understand what's with Amazon and ju I'm just strictly saying about the way it's filmed and some of the CGI. The Witcher just looks like a step better. The, the, the effects are a step better. The actual photography is a step better. Now the Witcher is very dark and very moody and I feel like it's lit by a lot of candles. I mean, every scene there's like a hundred candles in it. So maybe that adds more to the ambiance and this show's a little bit brighter, a little bit more, I guess, supposed to be hopeful. Um, I did enjoy the cast. I liked the journey. I liked the struggle. I liked some of the stuff like the leaf people who weren't going to fight. And then that whole thing was cool. And then they, they, I liked the whole inquisitor thing. I, there's a lot to like about this series and I think it can go up from here. I'm hopeful for that. I get where the audience is coming from because it was the plot was at such a crushing pace and things had to happen because of the plot that we didn't have time to go back and explain them. We're just supposed to go, yeah, maybe there'll be a season two. Don't build your shows based on the fact that you think you're going to get a second season. Look at Cowboy Bebop. Look what happened there. They set it up for a second season and guess what they got? They thought for sure that show was going to get a second season. Same here. They thought for sure they were going to get a second season. So they were, and it might not have. That you never know. Sometimes things don't resonate with audiences. And this isn't like glowing. People aren't like screaming about how great it is. I know it's doing very well on Amazon, but I don't hear a ton of people. You know, it seems like the hardcore fans are like, it's passable. They're like, it's okay. We like it. You know, from all the feedback that you guys have given me, it seems like they've strayed far off course from the books, but it seems acceptable. At some point, you might piss off those hardcore fans. If you piss them off and you don't have that built-in fan base anymore, you're going to lose it. So I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me as I broke this down. If you like what I did here, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Our channel could use your help to grow. It's really important to us that you give us that. You help share it. That way we can grow the channel and we can do more of these things for you. So what say you? Let us know down in the comments below. What was I wrong about? Probably a lot. But anyway, catch our full-length audio podcast. It's on Stitcher, Spotify, and iTunes for free. 
and our live stream 7 30 p.m friday nights eastern standard time catch us there and from all of us here at our views will kill you kill you we love y'all and i'm on to the next one